Hello peoples, so today I'm doing a video that you guys have requested for me for like a year now and I've never done it purely because I've never had all my products at once ready to go but I have it, no excuses, let's get into it. This video is going to be all about how to keep and maintain red hair whilst keeping it healthy um, and red constantly, almost constantly. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to know more, just keep watching. Luna shows you how to do it. Just quickly before I start, see this little menu bar here? This bright coloured 80s themed thing? This is my menu bar where I'll have annotations linking you to certain parts of the video depending on what topic I'm talking about. So if you aren't interested in something I'm talking about, you can click through and skip and get right onto the thing that you want to know about. Okay, so first off, I want to make a quick little announcement. Not really an announcement, but I've been talking about Affinage Be Red in prior videos. I do have to let you guys know that Affinage have changed their name of that product, and it's now Affinage Infinity. Woo! This one is the color Intense Red 6 that I've been using. So, um, yeah, so from now on, any previous referral to Affinage B Red, I'm talking about Affinage Infinity in number 6. Okay, so a lot of people want to dye their hair red and they don't quite understand that if you dye your hair red, it, you now have a new job in your life. You have a new job that you have to dedicate your time to and that's your hair. Because having red hair is like having a child. You need to look after it, otherwise it'll die. Not that dramatic, perhaps. But it's not going to be good. So if you are thinking of dyeing your hair red and you don't think that you have the money or the time to keep it red, just don't do it because you will have it red for a little while and then you'll be like, oh, it's gone orange, it's gone yellow, and then you'll cry to me and I'll be like, look, you got to look after it, alright? Can't do anything else for you. So, when washing your hair, things to think about. Number one, try and wash your hair in like the coolest water you can possibly do stand if you can't stand cold water I have mine like just a bit warmer um, purely because I'm washing in the shower and I don't want to freeze the rest of my body whilst I'm showering okay I love hot showers you guys don't need to know that <laughs> so I like wash my body and then wash my hair separately in colder water when I'm in the shower you also want to avoid washing your hair all the time I wash my hair maximum twice a week What's that? You think that's gross? Uh-uh. It's actually healthy for your hair not to wash it that often. Depending on your hair type, I suppose. But sometimes you've got to let the natural oils in your hair come out and hang out with your hair and make love to it and make it smooth and shiny and lovely. It's good for it. Your hair doesn't produce oils for no reason. They're there to help you. So you are allowed to have greasy hair. If you don't like having greasy hair, then an awesome alternative to washing your hair in the shower is something like dry shampoo. And what I've got at the moment is a Tresemme Fresh Start dry shampoo. You literally just spray it into your roots and where all the grease is, brush it through and bam. It's supposed to take out the oiliness as well as the oily smell that your hair could give off as well. So dry shampoo. You can't wash your hair every day or every second day and expect a colour like this to last. It's just not going to happen. You are just dreaming. When washing your hair, you've got to use good shampoo, right? Shampoo that's not going to strip your hair. Do not use head and shoulders. I don't care how much dandruff you have, alright? It's either dandruff or red hair, okay? I've got dandruff. I just do this and it comes out like in... Look at it. Flaking around. Like in the breakfast club, okay? Make snow with my hair. And as well as a good shampoo, you're going to need a good conditioner that's going to keep your hair moisturized and lovely. Um, your shampoo and conditioner also need to be for color treated hair, so keep that in mind. Um, what I use is this Biolage Color Care Therapy by Matrix, and it is pretty awesome. As you can see, it's color care, right? It's all about color. It's all about caring for color. Any shampoo for color treated hair this is just what I'm using at the moment. You can I also use Red Ken, um, RPR, anything. Just a nice brand. But then having said that, there's no point having a good shampoo if you're not going to have a colour depositing shampoo as well. So what I do is I shampoo my hair with the normal shampoo and then I grab this little guy out here. And this is a De Lorenzo um, 
colour depositing shampoo. I'm using the colour Fire Red. With my hair, I prefer a red that's got like an orange undertone. I don't like the pink base red, I like a more yellow base red. Um, so what this one does is it actually brings out the red-orange colour more than the pinky stuff. You can get this in, I think, Cherry, which is more of a pink base red. So yeah, if that's what you prefer, then go that one. But yeah, I like Fire Red because I like Fire Red hair. It tells you how to use it on the back, but just quickly, I, you know, leather your hair and then leave it in for a few minutes so the colour can deposit and then wash it out. Then use your conditioner manure, but with your conditioner, here's a little trick. If you can get like a vegetable based dye or like a gel dye or something like that, that is red and mix it into your conditioner, I probably would do one third dye, two thirds conditioner, something like that. Um, that way when you put your conditioner in your hair, not only is it conditioning, but it is also depositing more colour. Say Shut that! Shut your face! So, I have an empty, almost empty bottle of um, Affinage Colour Grenade. This is in the colour Fireworks. Um, what I do is I keep this in the shower. I will get my conditioner right, put a little blob in my hand and then put another blob of this on top of the conditioner mix that in and put in my hair so I don't like pre-mix it I just do it while I'm in the shower that works really well that is like I said an orange based red you can also find a cherry version somewhere I'm sure um, you can also use this is something that I have used in the past this is <laughs> I think this is a bit more pinky though Hair Colour Plus in red and what it is is it's a kind of gel dye. You can mix that in with your conditioner or you can just use it to refresh your hair. So that's that one. Or you can use your special effects dye or manic panic dye, whatever you actually use to dye your hair. You can put that in your conditioner as well. So I always get asked what I prefer between Magic Contrast and Affinage and to be honest it's really about how much money I have at the time. Um, because Affinage comes in double the size for a little bit less of the price that Magic Contrast costs, I usually get Affinage purely because of budget reasons. But if I'm going to be completely honest, the Affinage has a pinker tone to it, the Magic Contrast has an orangier based red tone to it. And that's, as you know, that's what I prefer, so I would prefer to have Magic Contrast if I was loaded. But I can't justify getting half the amount and paying more. So, mm. so as of now, my hair dyeing procedure goes from um, using either Magic Contrast or Affinage on my roots, which I need to touch up. Then I grab Special Effects in Hot Lava, and I use that on the rest of my hair. And I'll tell you why I do this. But firstly, I'm not sure if you guys understand how the Affinage and Magic Contrast products work. When you are putting peroxide in the dye, that is something that is lightening your hair. It's not like a miracle, magical thing that makes your hair red without destroying your natural colour underneath. It does lighten your hair and when the red eventually fades out, if you let it get that way, you will have blonde hair underneath or orange hair underneath. I'm not quite sure if that came across in my tutorial videos, but I just assume people understood how peroxide works. So to avoid continuously lightening and damaging my hair, I have developed a method that I think works pretty well. Um, feel free to implement it. I grab the Affinage Magic Contrast, whatever lifting product you use, maybe L'Oreal High Color. I've never used that by the way, that's a US thing, so it's a US alternative. I use Affinage and Magic Contrast. Can't tell you much about the high, lift, high color. <laughs> use your high lift product to lift your roots if they are dark. Then grab special effects and I'm gonna recommend special effects over manic panic because I think it lasts way longer um, and throw that through the rest of your hair if you were dyeing your hair for the first time obviously do the whole head in affinage or magic contrast or whatever product you prefer and you can do that until your hair is as bright as you want it to be but after that don't keep lightening the parts that are already bright you're just gonna lose all your hair I also want to quickly tell you that I found another product that does high lift red dyeing like Magic Contrast and Affinage and it is called Alpha Path Evolution 
of the color contrasty or something like that. Um, the color is rosso, red rojo. See, I didn't know that then, but now I know how to say that. Vermelho rouge rotfarben. I haven't used it yet. I will let you know how that goes. I'm not going to do a tutorial on it because you use it exactly the same way as Affinage and Mag Magic Contrast, so doing another tutorial would be pointless. Um, but I'll, I'll let you know how this turns out. And it might be easier to find. Healthy hair. Something that is really, really hard to achieve when you are constantly lightening and dyeing your hair and being mean to it and calling it names. All that evil stuff that we do to look beautiful. But what you need are some deep conditioning products, some split end repairing, all that kind of stuff. Moisturizing, all that. I used to have a product by Nashi, which was a conditioning hair treatment. I don't have it with me at the moment, I've got to get another one, but I'll try and put a picture of it here somewhere for you to see what it looks like. That is awesome, I use it after my conditioner and then leave it in, let it soak in, let the hair drink it all up yay you can also get like leave-in conditioners or leave-in products that moisturize and regenerate your hair this is RPR give me strength um, what you do is when your hair is wet out of the shower you rub it all through your hair don't use too much though you've got to use a tiny bit otherwise your hair will be super greasy but um, it's really good for brittle hair and you know reduces snapping and all that sort of thing which I have problems with not anymore. Hair masks, also handy. Um, every now and then, chucking in a nice juicy hair mask. Um, following the directions on the tub. This one is by Schwarzkopf. Schwarzkopf, which means blackhead in German. Um, according to this, up to 97% less split ends. So, what do you reckon? Is it working? <laughs> and my ultimate go-to product for keeping my hair nice and healthy is any form of argan oil. What I'm using at the moment is Agadir <laughs> argan oil. So I'll quickly read out what it does. Instantly penetrates, moisturizes, shines, corrects frizzies. It actually says frizzies, not frizz. Conditions, humidity resistant. It's just, oh look, all the things that you want to hear. Um, hydrates and conditions, leaves hair shiny, smooth, luxurious and healthy. What more do you want? So what you do is you rub a little bit in your hands um, and rub it all through your hair when it's wet. Once your hair's all styled and dry, rub some more through and it will make it all shiny and pretty. It's beautiful. Now I do know argan oil can be expensive. You can buy little crappy bottles for like 50 bucks. This one cost me $30, uh, 30 something dollars I think. And there's 118 mils. So I was pretty happy with that one. So yeah, that's pretty much all the advice I have on keeping your hair red and keeping it healthy. I am constantly learning new things about red hair. I know you can get like red mousse and red protein filler is another thing that you should probably get. Um, there are like sprays, there are all kinds of products that I'm yet to try and if I do, I will let you know how that goes. I hope this has answered all your questions about my hair. I do get tired typing out responses about how to look after your hair. So hopefully this will cover everything. And if you ever have a question about red hair, then I can just link you to this video and I don't have to bother typing out an essay every single time. For a list of all these products, there'll be a link in the description telling you what their names are and if I can find links to where they are sold I'll put it in there but if not I'm sorry maybe just eBay it and Google doesn't hurt sometimes people ask me for help on something that they can just Google and find out the answer themselves and that to me is a little bit frustrating so Google is there it's free you just type in exactly what you're asking me instead of sending me an email saying what is da 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 just Google it Googleize it revolutionize in the world so I hope this has been helpful until next time I have been Luna and you have been watching me anyway this video has gone for long enough so I'll see you next time bye <sighs> Lala. time to talk to camera time to talk to camera if you want to know more about that <laughs> so I don't care how much dandruff dandruff that's all I have to say about shampoo. No, it's not. That's a lie. I have more things to say about shampoo. Eyes and all that.
crud. That's a word I never used in my life. Coming in the question at the